Welcome, tech enthusiasts, to Rated, the place where passions flare and opinions collide in the world of technology. This is a sometimes heated debate where we argue whether a given piece of technology, tech platform, or software tool is either overrated or underrated. Uh, I'm Nicholas Hughes, uh, CEO and co-founder of EITR Technologies. I'll be your host on this episode, in addition to arguing for the side of overrated. Uh, on the underrated side, uh, we have our guest, Stephanie Pfeiffer. Stephanie, tell us a little about, bit about yourself. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Um, my name is Stephanie Pfeiffer. I'm the CTO of EITR Technologies. I have a background in software development and music performance. And I have been a DevOps engineer for the last few years, and I've made some opinions about Terraform that I need to address with Nick. <laughs> All right. Well, buckle up and prepare for a thrilling exchange of ideas as we go toe to toe on this episode of Rated. Our featured piece of technology for this episode is Terraform. Uh, to kick off the debate, each of us will have one minute to present our opening statement, highlighting the key points we'll be discussing throughout the debate. Uh, remember, we're looking for well-reasoned arguments, unique perspectives, and of course, some spirited back and forth. Stephanie, as the underrated side, you'll begin with your opening statement. The floor is yours. Excellent. I have not timed my speech, so if I go over or under one minute, I apologize. Sorry, not sorry. So. Terraform, let's jump right in. Underrated because it has such a good flexibility. Um, it is multi-cloud support for your infrastructure as code. Terraform is a cloud agnostic, which means it supports multiple cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And that makes it easier for teams to work with multiple cloud providers and reduce the learning curve associated with each provider's specific tools. Um, Given that it's also got a modular architecture. Terraform is designed to be modular, which means you can break your infrastructure into smaller reusable components. This allows you to share common infrastructure components across your projects and helps reduce the amount of duplicated code as we like to keep things dry here. Uh, and it also has a lot of version control. So Terraform integrates well with the version control systems such as GitLab, um, allowing you to easily track changes in your infrastructure and collaborate with your team. This makes it easier to manage large infrastructure projects and ensures that changes are properly reviewed and tested before they're deployed. And I'm gonna say those are my top three and I think I might be around a minute, so. <laughs> awesome, well, uh, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, some interesting points there for sure. Uh, now it's my turn to present the overrated side. Um, I think one of my biggest gripes uh, is that there's this special uh, data service layer associated with Terraform. Uh, you have to learn this new language. Like granted, it is um, very close to JSON, but it has some idiosyncrasies there. Um, and uh, there's also some syntax uh, issues that make it uh, not quite programming friendly. Um, also, state files uh, are problematic in a lot of different ways. Uh, they hold sensitive information, uh, and you might not know that things are stashed in there that uh, are uh, something that you shouldn't be sharing. Um, and they're also really fragile. Um, it, you have to do a lot of massaging to them sometimes uh, to, to get them to work. And then um, finally, there isn't really a good like discover and document type of mechanism um, in order to create infrastructure as code from existing resources. Uh, you know, there's some real basic things, but um, if you were to try and pull in like an entire AWS account or something like that, uh, it's pretty cumbersome. Uh, so those are my main points. Um, now that we've heard the opening arguments uh, and it's clear that we're in for an uh, intense debate, um, it's time to dive deeper into the arguments, challenge each other's perspectives, and examine the implications of today's featured technology. Uh, let's get this debate started. So, 
Stephanie, uh, you said that Terraform was cloud agnostic. Um, I did. I take issue with that. I know. Uh, mostly because Terraform itself isn't cloud agnostic. Um, sure, it has this abstracted uh, format that it can um, be used on many different clouds, uh, <clears throat> but it's not like you can take the code that you wrote for AWS and move it over to Azure GCP, right? Like you have to fully rewrite those things because the resources might be different. Um, you know, there, there could be uh, different parameters. You know, it really depends on, on how the APIs of the cloud layer were developed and the SDKs on top of them. Uh, so I wouldn't say that it's really cloud agnostic per se. Yeah, I mean, I can see your point because, you know, it does take work to go between the cloud providers. It's not something they're going to make super easy for us. But if I wrote something for AWS and I needed to port it over to Azure, I've already got the bones there to sort of know what I'm looking for. If I'm an AWS expert and I need to go into Azure and I know that I have a Route 53 in AWS, I'm going to find the similar thing in Azure. I'm going to have the same Terraform-ish to be able to deploy in Azure. So that's kind of why I like the multi-cloud support. And for anything that I can externalize completely, you know, I could pair Terraform with another technology like Ansible um, and just run them both together and make a holistic platform. Eh. Yeah, uh, so the, the way that, that Ansible is usually used with Terraform um, is as a host provisioning, uh, like configuration management system, right? Terraform handles all of the things at the cloud layer to spin up an instance for, uh, for instance, uh, and then Ansible, um, would be leveraged after the fact on the actual operating system in order to like install software or bring it in compliance, things like that. So, I mean, sure, things like that can be used in tandem, just like Terraform could be used with Salt or Puppet or insert configuration management platform here. Sure. Um, but, you know, I don't think that it, it brings you additional flexibility at the cloud layer, which is really what uh, Terraform concentrates on. Yeah, and I think that it's, I think that plays into its modular architecture though, is that like, I've got pieces that I can put together and you know, it's really useful to have little building blocks that I can piece together in order to build out my infrastructure as code. And I think Terraform does a good job of putting that together. So people yeah, I mean, I'll agree that um, there are some some pretty good uh, examples uh, of how to create modules in a flexible way. Um, I will say that uh, th there isn't like a winning paradigm, though. Uh, so you get lots of people implementing modules in much different ways. Um, That's true. And uh, so one of the main problems that I have with uh, modules that people put out there uh, for the world to consume uh, is that they aren't opinionated at all, right? Like, you know, they uh, try to account for literally every possible case um, for configuring a thing. And there comes a point at which you've basically written the entirety of the API into a module. And then everybody has to pass in, uh, you know, a data structure to the module that basically looks like the module uh, would have looked like as resources anyway. So I think that, you know, modules can get out of hand really quickly. Um, and I'm a big fan of being opinionated for specific environments as a result of that. Um, you know, the, the other thing that I'll say is that uh, the module format um, makes uh, one of my points uh, even stronger, and that's the state file fragility. Um, state files become really fragile, especially when you have modules involved because if there are sweeping changes to those modules or things move around uh, or you pull it out of the module um, without destroying the infrastructure itself, uh, managing those state files is really problematic. 
So I do think that Terraform is in general underrated, but when we start debating the state file, you could maybe pull me over to your side. <laughs> because that uh, is uh, very frustrating as somebody who likes to put things in alphabetical order uh, <laughs> and be very organized. And then it tells me that my state is now broken. Um, but I do like that it's another layer of sort of version control of my Terraform. So I know Git has integrated with Terraform and I think that that's awesome. It makes things easier to deploy across teams. Um, but it also gives me that layer of my planning and applying before I even put it into source control. So I do appreciate that. Um, and I think that even though the state file does have its, you know, it needs some work got some life lessons to go through. Uh, I think that it's still a good way to manage these things, especially in environments where people, multiple people are working on the same infrastructure as code. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I will concede your point there uh, because the um, that concept of like a third state, like I call it, um, you know, you have your um, your code that you wrote and you have the actual uh, cloud environment, um, those are, are two distinct states, right? It's kind of easy to manage those things, um, but what it doesn't account for really is, is drift. And that's what that third state uh, handles really well. And it, it solves that problem of, I have written, um, you know, some some infrastructure is code that defines certain things, but maybe I don't care about some other pieces, right? Like I didn't define any tags on my instance or something like that inside of my code. Um, somebody could go and change the tags on the actual instance through click ops, you know, clicking around inside the AWS console. Uh, and there would be no way to determine that uh, unless somebody is, you know, going through the console and, and checking things out, right? So the, the third state does give you the ability to, um, you know, do drift detection. And uh, the, there really isn't another way to, to solve that, that I'm aware of at least. Well, I think that we might actually be on the same page with this one, but <laughs> I do, that's where I want to say, and I think this gets back to one of your other points, um, is Terraform's got a lot of great community support. So everybody that's going through this has experienced something similar and I'll be able to get someone to help me, you know, through my questions when I hit these edge cases where my state file is corrupted and I need to go in there and stop trying to put things in alphabetical order. Um, I Google that every time. <laughs> uh, I won't accept it, Terraform. Um, but yeah, I think Terraform as an infrastructure as code technology, it has such a large community base behind it that it's hard to not see it as the de facto um, technology to use. Yeah. And, you know, I'll agree that by market share, it's it's definitely the largest, right? You know, the, the folks out there doing infrastructure as code against plat, uh, cloud platforms are, are largely using Terraform. Um, and they're because of that, there is a, a large community that's built up around it. Um, but, you know, I still think that it is overrated as a technology um, just because I think that its market share um, outstrips its actual usefulness a lot of times. Um, Dang, you know, I, that was I, more I, savage than I think you expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I, th I think that like, you know, they were really the first player on the scene, right? You know, when when people started doing cloud things, um, you know, there were some early contenders, but Terraform was really the first one to like get out there and start doing things. Um, and and people latched on to it uh, in the real early days. And, you know, it, they just sort of snowballed from there, right? And, you know, after that point, any any competing innovative players have to contend with this, you know, large amount of market share that uh, that Terraform has, and you know, I just I think that Terraform could be better. You know, we we deal with a lot of idiosyncrasies um, in its implementation just because we we kind of have to, um, and so you know I. 
you know, yeah, they're they're the the biggest dog uh, in the house right now. But you know, I still think that um, you know, for for what it is and what it does, it could be better and is therefore overrated. All right. Well, that sounds like very conclusive. So let me say something that you know makes my point. Um, and you believe that Terraform is underrated because it may be the biggest dog in the house. Um, and it does need some work, you know, nothing's perfect, but not only is it defining a software that I can use to manage my infrastructure as code, but it's also outlining the processes and what people should be looking for in a new technology that is trying to become another infrastructure as code, you know, um, like the item project, uh, and other projects out there that would be comparable to Terraform. Um, now we're in the future. Terraform is setting those standards and some of them are going to be great. Some of them are not going to be great, but I believe they're underrated because people don't recognize the fact that they are leading the way here. Will they always be leading the way? Probably not. That's how it works. But right now. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there are people uh, and organizations that, that always tend to stay on top. And I wouldn't be surprised if Terraform succeeds in that. Um, you, you did mention Item Project, which is a, a new player on the scene, uh, just sort of getting started here. And, um, you know, you, you made the comparison where it was like, hey, you know, these features are inherent to, to Terraform. Um, currently, like, new projects like Item need to fulfill those right like they, they need to capture all these existing things in order to try and and get some of that market share as they grow um but then do more also right like hey here's our bare minimum and oh we can also do this other thing right like you know one of the things that i brought up in the beginning was that in terraform there isn't really a good like discover and document type of mechanism um you know you can import resources from the cloud uh, you know, and, you know, do that into bare resources and then flesh out what parameters are changed and you, know, you can create uh, Terraform code from it. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's difficult, you know, you, you, you can't just say, here's my AWS account, go nuts, right? Like, you know, there's other frameworks that you have to live inside of your right custom code to do it. Um, but with item that's like a first party thing right like that's the killer app for me and if they can um you know expand the capabilities so that you know people transitioning from terraform won't say like oh where's this feature where's that feature um the the ability of item to reach out to a cloud account pull down every single thing that's in there and create infrastructure as code instantly for it um is a huge boon yeah i think that i mean i'm all, all for innovation and i think that item is probably like you said basing what it has off of terraform because it needs that minimum viable but that's really exciting that they're taking it to the next level and i imagine it will be a back and forth between terraform and whoever the next big dog is in the room <laughs> and they will trade they will try and one-up each other and eventually may find their niche but uh, Terraform is absolutely the baseline that they're using right now. They're looking at, you know, what did Terraform do right? They're also looking at what it did wrong. And that's where I, I'm most interested in seeing both of these projects grow. I think maybe we'll, we'll end on that optimistic note looking towards the future. Um, Yay future. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of this fiery debate on Rated. Was so fiery. Uh, <laughs> both of us have presented well-argued cases uh, and passionately defended our positions on whether Terraform is overrated or underrated. Uh, we've heard some compelling points from both of our sides, uh, but now it's time to wrap up the discussion. So uh, before we conclude, um, we'll have one last chance to share our final thoughts. Uh, Stephanie, any closing remarks on why you believe uh, Terraform is underrated? Uh, I'll say Terraform is underrated because of the novelty of what it's setting forth and how it's leading the way on these um, 
infrastructure as code mission that it's on. Um, but don't shy away from innovative new tools. But if you're looking for something to get you going right now, it's definitely Terraform. Thank you, Steph. And my final thoughts on why Terraform is overrated. Um, you know, I, I think I, I mainly just settle on the fact that um, there, there's a lot of hype for Terraform, right? It was first on the scene and it's, uh, you know, definitely the largest tool used by market share. Um, and everybody's always talking about it and doing new things. And, you know, there's lots of uh, other tooling that makes a big deal out of supporting Terraform. Um, and so I just think that, you know, for what it is, for what it does, for the, the difficulties that we still have with pieces of it, um, it is a great tool, but it is overrated. So, Stephanie, thank you for joining me today and for your insightful arguments and uh, for providing our viewers with plenty of food for thought. Uh, so now it's up to you, our audience, to decide which side you agree with. Head over to the comments section on our social media channels. Uh, we have YouTube and LinkedIn, uh, which are our primaries. And um, cast your vote on whether you think Terraform is overrated or underrated. Uh, we'll reveal the results in our next episode. Stay tuned. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this spirited debate on Rated. A uh, big thank you to our guest, Stephanie Pfeiffer, for joining me today. And to our viewers, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to catch the next thrilling installment of Rated. Uh, until next time, keep exploring new tech and debate all the things.